so guys welcome to our channel once again in today's video on our jam chemistry exam revision series we have these 20 questions to answer on acid base and salts so guys here in this video we are going to be focusing on the subtopic general characteristics and properties of these acid base and salts so guys ensure to stay till the end of this video also if you feel you want to answer the question before provide the answer at any point in this video you can always pause the video and try out the question and see if you can get the answer before provide the answer thereafter so guys we're going to start with the first question here it says the arrhenius theory is based on the a theory of molecular sides b theory of atoms c theory of reaction d theory of ionization so guys the answer to this question is option d and that's theory of ionization the Arrhenius theory is actually based on the theory of ionization Arrhenius in 1884 proposed the concept of acid and base based on the theory of ionization so according to Arrhenius the acids are the hydrogen containing compounds which give hydrogen ions or protons on dissociation in water and then the base is a hydroxyl containing compound which gives hydroxyl ion on dissociation in water so that's it for that question guys let's quickly look at the next question and that's question number two it says one of the following is a method of preparing acid so we have a dissolving an acid and hydride in water b neutralization method c reaction with base d reaction with metal so guys the answer to this question is option a and that's dissolving an acid and hydride in water acid can be prepared by dissolving an acid and hydride in water so guys an acid and hydride is a non-metal oxide which forms an acid when reacted with water so that's a good way of preparing acid so let's look at the next question guys question number three it says which of the aqueous solution with the ph values below will liberate hydrogen when it reacts with magnesium metal so guys looking at the options here we have a 3.0 b 13.0 c 6.5 and d 7.0 so guys the answer to this question will be option a so the most acidic ph here is that of option a and that's 3.0 that's the answer to this question because it's going to liberate hydrogen gas when it reacts with magnesium metal so guys that's it for that question let's look at the next question question number four it says the following methods are suitable methods of preparing simple salts except a neutralization b reaction of an acid with a metal b hydrogenation d double decomposition so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's hydrogenation so hydrogenation actually means to treat hydrogen it's a chemical reaction between molecular hydrogen and another compound or element so usually in the presence of a catalyst such as maybe a nickel platinum and so on so guys this is not the method suitable for preparing simple salts and as such it's the answer to this question so let's look at the next question question number five it says normal salts are formed when all the replaceable hydrogen ions in the acid have been a ionized b partially replaced by a metal c mixed with simple salts d completely replaced by metallic ions so guys the answer to this question is option d and that's when all the replaceable hydrogen ions 
and the acid have been completely replaced by metallic ions. So let's consider the next question. Question number six, it says, Zinc oxide is said to be amphoteric because it's A, forms a double salt, B, forms an acid salt, C, is an insoluble base, D, reacts with a base or an acid. So guys, the answer to this question here is option D. Zinc oxide is said to be amphoteric because it reacts with a base or an acid. So let's look at the next question. Question number seven, it says, the process of boiling animal fat or plant oils with a strong base is known as A, purification, B, neutralization, C, herbal process, D, saponification. So guys, the answer to this question is option D, and that's saponification. Saponification is a process of boiling animal fat or plant oil with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So let's consider the next question, question number eight. It says, sulfur trioxide is not directly dissolved in water. In the industrial preparation of sulfuric acid by the contact process because a acid is usually added to water and not water to acid b the reaction between sulfur trioxide and water is violently exothermic c sulfur trioxide does not dissolve readily in water d sulfur trioxide is an acidic gas so guys the answer to this question is option b and that's the reaction between sulfur trioxide and water is violently exothermic the reaction between sulfur trioxide and water is violently exothermic so take note of that let's consider the next question question number nine it says nitrogen dioxide reacts with water vapor in the atmosphere to form A, nitric acid, B, nitrogen gas, C, nitric oxide, D, nitrous acid. So guys, the answer to this question is option A, and that's nitric acid. Nitrogen dioxide reacts with water vapor in the atmosphere to form nitric acid. So guys, if we want to show the equation of this reaction, we can simply have Nitrogen dioxide plus water two of these and this will be So guys, that's it for that question. So let's wipe this off and then let's go ahead and check out the next question. And guys, that's, that's question number 10 here. So guys, question number 10 says, which of the following process involves neutralization? A, liming of soil. B, sharing of sugar. C, gardening of oils d soaring of milk so guys the answer to this question is option a and that's liming of soil actually neutralization is a chemical reaction in which an acid and a base reacts to form a salt and water so liming of soil is a process that involves the neutralization of acidic soil by adding lime which is calcium carbonate in this case a base so this will neutralize the acid, forming salt and water. So guys, that's it for that question. Let's consider the next question. Question number 11. It says, Dash is known as an alkali. A. A soluble hydroxide. B. An insoluble oxide. C. A soluble oxide. D. An insoluble hydroxide. So guys, the answer to this question is option A. 
and that's a soluble hydroxide. A soluble hydroxide is known as an alkali. So let's consider the next question. Question number 12, it says. All right, guys, we have a reaction here, and it's a reversible reaction here. It's, an, it's a reaction between an acid here, which is the ethanoic acid, and a hydroxide ion here. And guys, here we have the products here which is an ethanoid as well, and water. So guys, the question says, in the reaction above, ethanoid is the A, conjugate acid, B, base, C, acid, and D, conjugate base. So guys, the answer to this question is option D, and that's conjugate base. When an acid reacts with other compounds, and it liberates a hydrogen ion it forms a conjugate base so guys in this reaction this ethanoic acid actually gives off a hydrogen ion and that's a proton so when it reacts in this manner and donates a proton it forms a conjugate base so guys this ethanoid here on the product side is a conjugate base. So guys, that's it for that question. Let's consider the next question. Question number 13. It says, Which of the following drying agents is not suitable for drying hydrogen sulfide? So option A, tetraphosphorus decalcide. B, calcium chloride. C, calcium oxide. And D, sulfuric acid or tetrahydrosulfosis acid so guys the answer to this question is option d and that's the tetrahydrosulfosis acid and that's because in the reaction between hydrogen sulfide and tetrahydrosulfosis acid the reaction is going to yield sulfur and water so guys if we want to check out the reaction the equation of this reaction let's zoom right in here we'll have hydrogen sulfide reacting with tetrahydrosis of a cis acid so this will yield water plus sulfur so guys in that case sulfuric acid cannot be used as a drain agent for hydrogen sulfide so we're going to go ahead and check out the next question that's question number 14 it says Insoluble salts can be prepared by A. Neutralization of alkali by an acid. B. The action of dilute acid on metal. C. Direct combination of two electrons. D. The action of dilute acid on a trioxocarbonate 4. So guys, the answer to this question is option C. And that's direct combination of two elements. Insoluble salts can be prepared by direct combination of two elements so the preparation of insoluble salts can either be by double decomposition or by combination of constituent elements so let's consider the next question question number 15 it says what happens when an acid reacts with a base a the acid and base neutralize each other to form salt and water b the acid releases oxygen gas. B, C, acid releases hydrogen gas. And D, the acid and base reacts to produce a metal oxide. So guys, in the reaction between an acid and a base, salt and water is the product formed. So option A is the correct answer to this question. And that's a neutralization reaction. 
So let's consider the next question, guys. Question number 16, it says, the basicity of ethanoic acid is A, 2, B, 4, C, 3, D, 1. So guys, I'd like you to pay attention to this question here and try to memorize this and always remember the answer to this question. The basicity of ethanoic acid is 1. Guys, I've often seen this question here repeated and you should pay attention to it and try to always remember that the basicity of ethanoic acid is 1. Actually, the basicity of a compound is the number of replaceable hydrogen in a molecule of that substance. So, in the case of this ethanoic acid, there is just one replaceable hydrogen here and that's what makes the basicity so here pay attention guys especially to this compound the ethanoic acid the basicity is one so let's look at the next question question number 17 it says the number of hydroxonium ions produced by one molecule of an acid in aqueous solution is its a acid strength b concentration c basicity d ph so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's basicity the number of hydroxonium ions produced by one molecule of an acid in aqueous solution is its basicity so remember we've already talked about this basicity and remember that the basicity is the number of replaceable or ionizable hydroxonium ions or hydrogen ions that is present in one molecule of an acid in aqueous solution. So let's consider the next question. Question number 18, it says, The contact process is used for the industrial production of A. Hydrochloric acid B. Sodium hydroxide c calcium oxide and d sulfuric acid so guys the answer to this question is option d that's sulfuric acid the contact process is used in the industrial production of sulfuric acid so let's consider the next question question number 19 it says the acid that is used to remove rust is a trioxonitrate 5 b tetroxosulfate 6 c hydrochloric d boric so guys the answer to this question is option c and that's the hydrochloric acid so they are highly corrosive especially in concentrated form so guys hcl here is the answer to this question so let's look at the next question and the last one for that that's question number 20 it says so here we have a diagram actually and we have a reaction here so this is an equation of a reaction and from here we have to answer the question the question here says from the reaction above which of the curves in the diagram represents the production of carbon dioxide as dilute hydrochloric acid is added a n b m c l and the p so guys without having to think of this so much we have to understand that when reactions starts occurring the graph actually moves in such a manner that at initial stage the concentration might be low and then the concentration starts increasing with time the concentration of the product actually starts increasing with time until it gets to a point where it flattens out. So guys, the option here that defines this is option A and that's N in the graph. So guys, this is the correct answer to this question because the reaction starts with producing just very little concentration of the products and then the products 
the concentration of the products and then the concentration of the products keeps increasing with time until it gets to where it flattens out that's where the concentration that's where the reaction has fully occurred so guys that's it for this lesson if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're not a subscriber also if you have any question regarding this video please drop your question on the comment section below and we're sure to give you a response so guys we we'll also encourage you to join our channel membership in order to get premium information on jam so guys it's a very important one and it will help you so much as you prepare for your jam so see you in the next video guys thank you for watching this video